What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So when you look at the new ZTE Axon 35 g what do you see? I think the default answer obviously is you see a smartphone with a surprisingly convincing hidden selfie camera. Some really cool tech and one of the best iterations of this that's come out so far. But in using this phone for the last week and a half, I also see a very solid upper mid-range device with the specs, performance, and features to compete. A really well-rounded device with few sacrifices for the price that also just happens to have a surprisingly convincing hidden selfie camera. I don't think it's totally fair to pigeonhole this smartphone into being that one device with an invisible selfie camera, even though that's literally what I did when I unboxed it. But at the end of the day, that is the most memorable feature, so let's just get that out of the way first and foremost, and then I'll explain everything else I like about the new ZTE Axon 30. Now, from the moment you pick this phone up, I think it's only natural to kind of want to look super close at the area where the selfie camera, which is still there, is hidden. But unless you're looking with the phone tilted at a very specific angle or with a bright light shining directly on it, you're really not going to be able to see it. ZTE did an amazing job in their second try at a hidden selfie camera, and for all intents and purposes, they really succeeded this time. In your average everyday use, no matter what you do, no matter what's on the screen, you're not going to see the hidden selfie camera. I tested out a bunch of videos and apps, played around with the brightness and different colors on screen. From a normal viewing distance, and even from a couple inches away from your face, there's pretty much nothing to see. And while a hole punch selfie camera, or even a notch, isn't a big deal at the end of the day, having no distractions whatsoever with your viewing experience is kind of cool. But if you want to pull the curtains back and reveal the trick, there's a couple ways in which you can see what's going on. Tilting the phone almost completely away from you will reveal a dark area, sort of a pixelated dim square, that reflects light differently than the main screen. That's the semi-transparent section of glass and display that's attempting to do all the work. What's interesting is that what you're seeing is still a small section of functioning display. It's a 400 ppi area for the AMOLED panel that lays over top of an embedded selfie camera. If you turn the display off and shine a light at it, you can also see everything that's going on too. But without that light, the blacked out screen doesn't really reveal anything. The hidden selfie setup has really gone from being a sorta cool party trick to now a genuinely good feature that I think is right on the cusp of being more mainstream. ZTE has proven that, at least from a display standpoint from the viewing experience, you can create a very convincing see-through screen that isn't just kinda good, but very good under some decent scrutiny. So with hiding the selfie camera, I consider this a success. I'm a fan of this ambitious new feature, and I'm impressed with what they were able to do. The screen though is one thing, there's still the matter of the selfie camera itself underneath that still needs to be usable at a minimum, but hopefully decent enough, since theoretically there was all this effort in trying to still have it in the end. And I know with last year's Axon 20, their first try at a hidden selfie camera, it was the picture quality that probably suffered the most. This time around, fortunately, things are a lot better, but there are still some some caveats that we need to talk about. Now, right off the bat, launching the selfie camera under the right conditions will show you in the viewfinder with no immediate concerns. But if you had some light behind you, for example, or there were any sort of bright spots in your scene, this is where the hidden selfie camera runs into some issues. The lens itself on the camera, after all, sits behind an additional layer of glass and hundreds of pixels, and putting anything in front of a camera, even if it is trying its best to be transparent, is going to affect the quality. You'll see some glare and it'll be smudgy, basically like you got your greasy fingers all over the lens. And this is just a product of the camera being set behind that extra stuff. That will affect image quality, sometimes a lot, sometimes a little. To even things out, the Axon 30 relies heavily on some AI processes that attempt to fix the glare, balance the colors, boost the detail, and improve the shot as much as possible. 
available. And you'll definitely see that between snapping the picture and viewing the end result. Under the right conditions, and with all that processing, you can get a decent picture out of it, but you're going to have to make some adjustments you otherwise wouldn't have with a normal smartphone. So no, this phone isn't going to produce amazing selfie shots, but it kind of comes down to this. If you don't care about the selfie camera at all, it makes no difference to you anyway. If you only snap some selfies on Snapchat every once in a while and nothing more, I still don't think you'll really care. If selfies and picture quality are a major concern for you, this isn't the device for you, and I think all those distinctions shouldn't come as a surprise. All in all, even with the limitations, I consider the hidden selfie camera on the ZTE Axon 30 to not just be a major improvement over last year, but to also be something that's more than just a proof of concept now. It's good, it works, there's a lot of potential here, and for folks who want something cool and new and to have a perfect 100% distraction-free display, you can get that now with this. Improvements to the picture quality with selfie camera will come as the technology improves, but as it is now, it's also not bad, all things considered. Like I said, I'd hate for this phone to just be all about this hidden selfie camera, but it really is an interesting feature that ZTE did quite well with, and I think it is worthy of that attention. Of course, that should not necessarily be the only reason why you consider this device. There's a million other elements in making a good smartphone, and fortunately, I do think the ZTE Axon 30 has a lot of other stuff to like too. Overall, design-wise, this is a pretty good-looking device, obviously, from the front and the back. It's plastic, and you feel that for sure, but the unique design, even with the ZTE Axon logos, is kind of cool. It's a very thin and lightweight phone in the hand, too. It's big, 6.92 inches, but not quite as chunky as similarly oversized devices, so shifting and maneuvering it, even with one-handed use, isn't too bad. Now, physically, I do think there's a couple of things I would have liked to have seen. You do get a hybrid SIM and SD card slot, which is good. This phone starts at 128 gigs of storage, but it's never a bad thing to have the potential to add more. There's no headphone jack, though you do get a USB-C headphone adapter in the box, not something that really anyone includes anymore. And there's just the one single speaker for your out loud listening experience. Stereo sound would have been nice. Other similarly priced phones have that, but the sound is still pretty good, albeit maybe a little quiet compared to some other devices. In addition to the in-display camera, there's also an in-display fingerprint reader too, and this isn't the ultrasonic flagship setup. It'll require a tap and hold to get the phone unlocked, but the touch area feels bigger than average. It's still very accurate, and I haven't found any issues with it at all once I figured out the timing of it. Now, I think there's two things in particular that make this phone stand out at its price range. And the first is the display. And I'm no longer talking about the selfie camera here anymore. This is solely for its resolution and setup. You get a 2460 by 1080 AMOLED panel, some 400 pixels per inch. And overall, the viewing experience here is really pretty great. Not only is it very sharp, even at this big size, but AMOLED allows for a bold, bright experience that really stands out. This is my favorite sort of combination, AMOLED without sacrificing resolution, and it's the perfect spec for this phone at its price point. On top of that, it's also a 120 hertz display, a feature usually reserved for top flagship phones, but this phone has it, and it gives you that ultra responsive feel that I can't live without now. All in all, every aspect of this phone's display is really solid. It's the right combination of just about everything, and I think it's a device that offers a viewing experience and a user experience as well that sort of exceeds its price point. The other thing this phone has going for it is its performance. And I think if you're looking for that $500 gaming phone, this is a device you should consider for that. Inside, this phone is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 870 5G chipset and the option to spec it with either 6, 8, or 12 gigs of RAM. Now, you do get a software experience that maybe some people aren't as familiar with, Android 11 with the MyOS 11 skin on top of it, but besides the very iOS-looking app icons, I think the OS experience as a whole is relatively positive. It's well-optimized for sure, with simple and useful tweaks and add-ons here and there. It's smooth, it's fluid, it's still a relatively stock setup with no garbage apps or bloatware, and in my experience, which should come as no surprise, 
because there hasn't been a performance issue yet with this phone. It's gonna cut through your average everyday stuff with ease, obviously, but this is a phone you can push quite hard, and it's going to excel when it comes to gaming and other graphics heavy stuff. It's obviously not a top of the line flagship, but for the price you pay here, you're getting a ton of performance potential. And I think this is a device you can do anything and everything with. It probably hits above its weight, and I think it is a very performance focused device. The downside, unfortunately, is that with such a huge display and with such powerful components, battery life on this phone isn't quite as good as I would have liked. It also doesn't help that there's only a 4200 milliamp battery inside, whereas phones this big often pack 5000 milliamps or more. I can pretty much make it through the day on a single charge, but that's not always with a whole lot of life left, usually under 20%, and a few times I did have to juice it up by 7 or 8 p.m. Fortunately, this this phone supports 65 watt fast charging, which will get you from zero to 100% in well under an hour. So if you need to juice up, a few minutes on the plug is really all you're gonna need. But out of everything, I do think the battery life is the one weak spot with this phone. Finally, there's also all those other cameras around back. The Axon 30 sports a pretty respectable quad lens setup with a 64 megapixel main lens, eight megapixel ultra wide, five megapixel macro, and two megapixel depth sensor. And altogether, there is a lot of shooting potential here. The camera app offers a nice array of shooting modes and some unique add-ons too, like a long exposure mode, 64 megapixel mode, manual controls, and even multi-camera support. You've got video capabilities, up to 4K 60, HDR, enhanced stabilization. I really didn't feel like anything was missing. And in practice, I think this phone takes some pretty good shots. The main lens is definitely the way to go. I think the ultra wide, while helpful, and I'm glad that it's there, tends to be a bit dull sometimes, and the dimmer the scene, the more the phone will struggle, unfortunately. But I think night mode shots still look pretty good, even with a ton of processing. The phone definitely relies on that to artificially enhance most of the shots, but I think the average looking pictures are bright and colorful, they still retain plenty of detail, and I don't have too much to complain about. It's not flagship caliber, but it's above average for sure, and I don't think you'll find a ton to complain about with the end result. So all in all, like I said at the start, I consider the ZTE Axon 30 5G to be a relatively good, well-rounded device with a nice emphasis on its viewing experience and performance that just also happens to have a cool new hidden selfie camera. That shouldn't be the main reason you buy this phone, but I can understand why that's getting all the attention. And I do think it's relatively positive attention too, because ZTE did a nice job with it in the end. Will we see the hidden camera trick become more mainstream? stream. What do you guys think? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.